Oh no, I accidentally created a Newton's Cradle of Skellies. Howdy, and welcome to Game Endeavor, where I make devlogs with an emphasis on game design and technique. I'm developing an open world RPG where you'll meet lovable characters, explore dark and treacherous dungeons, and build a base to stash your precious cheese. One of the more difficult tasks that I've come across as a developer is how to handle enemy movement in a way that's convincing and engaging for the player. This is especially difficult because there's a lot of factors to consider, such as what direction they should move towards to reach their goal, what entities are nearby so they don't clump up together into a hyperdense dense skeleton, and the nearby environment and everything else around them, and even once they've figured out how they should move, they need to do so smoothly so they don't jitter around like me after a long night of binge coding and coffee. Even though combat isn't the primary focus for my game, not nearly as much as the exploration and roleplaying, I still want it to be enjoyable because it's what builds tension and keeps the player engaged as they explore the world and uncover its secrets. If you look into AI movement, then one of the first things you may encounter is what's known as voids and steering behaviors. This is not what I'm using to be clear, but it is where I started and it helped me develop the technique that I'm currently using. Steering behaviors are where you combine simple actions such as move to this point, keep away from these points, and move in the same direction as these other points. On their own, these behaviors are very simple and unimpressive, but when combined and tweaked in specific ways, they can create something that I was quite stunned with when I first encountered them. But after implementing this some time ago in a prototype for another game, I quickly noticed some major flaws with the system. The biggest glaring one being how opposing vectors can cancel each other out to cause pretty silly situations where the AI will run away from the player, but there's a wall immediately opposite to them, so they just stand there completely dumbfounded by the existence of this wall as they wait for their slowly impending doom. Ideally, you would want them to realize that they have other options available to them, such as stepping ever so slightly to the side and continuing along that path for a bit. But since there's only one vector that has complete control over how they move, they just sit there, barely moving if at all. I searched for a while about how I could improve this and alternatives to AI movement and found a context-based steering behavior that inspired what I'm currently using. This is very similar to the behavior that I mentioned before, but it keeps a record of how desirable different directions are and chooses the most preferred direction that it can perform. For example, say I were to set down a carrot for truffles to snack upon. Odds are that he's going to move directly towards that carrot. That would be the obvious choice, but hold on there truffles, not so fast. He could, in theory, step off to the side for a bit, make a big half circle around the carrot, and then go in for the snack. It would be rather silly, yes, but it's still an option. So to help Truffles evaluate the different directions that he could take, I'm storing his options as weights that he can check and pick the most desirable path in the event that some of his options may be limited. To help me visualize these weights as I'm developing the movement systems and help you visualize them while binging these devlogs and subliminally clicking blue thumbs, I have created a gizmo that can draw what the AI is thinking. Each line represents the direction that they are considering, green lines showing a desire to move towards that direction, with the longer lines being more desirable, and red lines meaning that they have absolutely no desire to move in that direction. So as you can see, when one direction becomes obstructed, then the AI will pick the next best option and move in that direction instead. In order for an AI to determine this, I need to tell it how likely a direction is to perform the desired result. I'm using a dot product here between the direction being considered and a vector that the entity would like to move towards. For those unaware, a dot product is a very useful thing that will return the cosine value of the angle between two normalized vectors. This value being the 1 in direction of the normal, negative 1 in the opposite direction, and 0 perpendicular to it. When normalized between 0 and 1, you get a scale of how desirable that direction is. The AI can then use this to determine which direction it should move. This is great for moving towards a specific location. I can simply take the highest unobstructed weight and move in that direction. But the true power of this system comes when you start shaping these weights and combining them to form even more interesting behaviors. Scaly's making a beeline for you is one way to prototype a simple combat system. It is what I've used so far and it has served its purpose as a placeholder, but it's not nearly as engaging as it could be. A much more interesting behavior would be for Scaly to move in and out of combat, strafe around their target, all while keeping a safe distance. I have one set of weights that will move toward the target as normal, but as they get closer to the target, the value of these weights are lessened so that the other behaviors can take over, so I'm weighing the weights. Once they are within the range to start strafing around the character, I apply a shaping function to the dot product that favors sideways movement instead of forwards and backwards. This causes them to start circling around their target, except, oh no, I accidentally created a Newton's Cradle of Skellies. I had to offset the following distance a bit, otherwise they start making perfect circles around their target and bouncing off of each other. A big issue that I've had with this system though is tweaking the movement to eliminate a lot of the jitteriness that I've noticed due to entities rapidly changing their direction back and forth. This is because I was having them move directly away from other nearby entities so they would get caught up in this tug of war of pushing each other in an attempt to get to their desired target. 
I fixed this by also applying a shaping function to the separation logic so that instead of trying to move directly away from the nearest enemy, they instead prefer to do so at a bit of an angle. When you combine this smarter form of movement with the overall tweaks to the Skelly's combat state machine, you get a very fun enemy to fight that even I spend my free time just spawning in a few for a quick session. And when I had a tester play this, they spent over an hour just fighting a handful of Skellies and Sprouts over and over. Combat wasn't the only enemy behavior to receive a massive improvement though. One of the main design pillars for my game is immersion, having things feel natural and convincing. And something that I've been wanting to improve for a while now is the wandering logic for my enemies. Before now, it has been just a placeholder so that they're not standing in one place as I record these devlogs. The logic was that they pick a random point somewhere around their spawn point and move towards it. If they were near the point, or it became obstructed within a short distance, then they would pick another point and start moving towards it. This is decent enough, but it feels very erratic and unnatural. The AI changes direction sporadically and it seems a little off to me. Rather than picking a random point to move towards, I would rather them have meander about, gradually changing direction, but remaining near their spawn point so that they don't wander off too far. To have them wander about, I'm making them move in a direction, but over time this direction will gradually sway left and right, which causes the entity to start changing direction. I'm using open simplex noise here to adjust the direction. There are a few benefits to using it here, Namely, the randomization that it produces is smooth, which gives the wandering a more natural feel to it. But more importantly, the values of open simplex noise tend to be more heavily weighted towards zero, which means that if it's done right, the entity isn't going to spend too much time changing direction. Instead, it will move straight for periods of time, and then ever so often it will start changing its direction and then start pulling it back towards zero, which causes it to start moving straight again. To keep them near their spawn point, I'm weighing their wandering direction back towards their spawn point whenever they start getting too far from it. This causes them to gradually start turning around until they're no longer moving away from their spawn point. To keep this looking smooth and natural, this isn't a hard transition though. The awaiting actually starts to take effect pretty short distance from their spawn point, currently at about a two tile radius. But it's weighted based on how far they are from the spawn point, so it's much less effective until they start getting further and further away. But since it's smoothed out over that distance, it can be difficult to tell where that point is, so to me, it feels much more natural and convincing. After I added these movement tweaks and AI improvements, I started experimenting with a faction system for NPC targeting. I ended up making it so that enemies could target each other, which surprisingly enough led to this interesting battle royale behavior with the enemies. I didn't expect this to look nearly as amazing as it did with no additional tweaking, but this was an aha moment for me. If I can flip a switch and make NPCs fight each other and have it look at this amazing, then I think I'm going to start leaning a whole lot more into the pet taming and raising system that I have planned next. If you want to join me while I work on this, then I've been streaming development for nearly every day on Discord. There's a link in the description to join our community, and it's been a fantastic way to interact with everyone as we do everything from adding new mechanics, drawing art, or just playing games together. We also got our first fan art of the Spirit Skelly, which is absolutely adorable, as well as two new NPCs that were designed during the Tuesday stream. There's always a treat when Scooter draws along with me during these. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next one.